the work and theories of the levellers and the diggers certainly had a short-term impact and were significant for a time, however with little impact on politicians. What the levellers and diggers did was to create a conservative backlash. Hobbes and Locke will have a much longer impact on political philosophy, the ideas about the way in which government and power are organised. This picture is the frontispiece to the first edition of Hobbes' Leviathan in 1651. The Leviathan is representing the power of the monarchy to unite the nation. As you can see, the Leviathan, which is represented by a strong individual, can be seen to be made up of both temporal, that of the earth, and spiritual, that of the heavens, beings. Thomas Hobbes is one of the limited amount of political philosophers who made an impact during the interregnum. The son of a vicar, born in 1588, he was Oxford educated. Working as a personal tutor to the landed elite, he travelled around Europe. When civil war broke out, he fled to Paris, fearing he would be targeted due to his royalist leanings. In Paris, Hobbes worked for a period as the tutor to the young Charles II, and began working on his 1651 book, Leviathan. The intention of this lecture is for you to be able to assess the significance of intellectual individuals on change in society between 1625 and 1688. Knowledge-wise, you will be able to explain the ideas of different individuals. Skills-wise, you will analyse different ways they impacted society between 1625 and 1688. And behaviourally, you will be evaluating their impacts to make judgments. Hobbes's Leviathan is a massive contradiction. While given some of the underpinning principles of liberalism with the rights of individuals, it clashes with the justification of strong leadership, similar to that of absolute monarchy. Hobbes's work is negative when it considers human nature and suggests that people are driven by a lust for power and the accumulation of that power. If not driven by lust, then individuals are driven by fear of those who lust for power and their own survival in this state of nature. Due to the majority of people living in fear of others, the people would give up their natural rights, such as the right to kill and steal from others to be protected by a strong individual or political body, called the Leviathan. The Leviathan will create laws to protect the individuals, and for any who break the laws, they will be punished for the good of all individuals. Thomas Hobbes was advocating the ideas of a social contract, a contract between the state and its citizens. For Hobbes, however, people agreed to this contract as they knew if they did not, anarchy will ensue. Hobbes believed that in a time before government, humanity lived in a state of nature of perpetual war, and this was the default human position. Without a strong state, humanity would refer to this state of nature, so the most important thing was a strong ruler or state. As a result, Hobbes believed people could have rights or individual liberties, but only if there was a strong ruler in charge. For Hobbes, therefore, in Britain, to stop the country reverting to the state of nature of war, as seen in the Civil War, a strong ruler was required, and for Hobbes, this was the Stuart monarchy. John Locke, born in 1632 to a Puritan family whose father fought for Parliament during the Civil War, studied medicine at Oxford. He later entered the service of the Earl of Shaftesbury, the founder of the Whig movement. When Shaftesbury fell out of favour in 1675, Locke fled to Holland and only returned with William and Mary in 1688. Though Locke had been writing for many years, the Glorious Revolution enabled their publication due to the justification of the Glorious Revolution. By using empiricism, a belief that knowledge can only come about as a result of experience, his theories in the 18th century will influence the philosophers Voltaire and Rousseau, in turn influencing the American and French revolutions. John Locke rejected the negative approach of Hobbes, believing that men were born free and equal in the eyes of God and were innately good beings. Like Hobbes, Locke believed in a social contract, which was used to protect life, liberty and property. Unlike Hobbes, however, Locke believed that it was not the state, 
or Leviathan, which was sovereign, but the people. Because if the people disagreed with the state, they were able to replace the state. It is this very basic idea of a careful balance between the state and its citizens, as was argued at the trial of Charles I, which underpinned Western civilization to this day. That the people are sovereign, and if the state fails to protect them, they have the right to modify the state. The two treaties on government published in 1689 is seen as the most influential and important work on political philosophy. It places sovereignty in the hands of the people. Locke's fundamental argument is that people are equal and invested with natural rights in a state of nature in which they live free from outside rule. In the state of nature, natural law governs behaviour and each person has licence to execute that law against someone who wrongs them by infringing on their rights. People take what they need from the earth, but hoard just enough to cover their needs. Eventually, people begin to trade with their excess goods with each other until they develop a common currency for barter or money. Money eliminates limits on the amount of property they can obtain. Unlike food, money does not spoil, and they begin to gather estates around themselves and their families. People then exchange some of their natural rights to enter into society with other people and be protected by common laws and a common executive power to enforce the laws. People need executive power to protect their property and defend their liberty. The civil state is beholden to the people and has power over the people only insofar as it exists to protect and preserve their welfare. Locke describes a state within a separate judicial, legislative and executive branch, the legislative branch being the most important of the three since it determines the laws that govern civil society. People have the right to dissolve their government if that government ceases to work solely in their best interest. The government has no sovereignty of its own. It exists to serve the people. To sum up, Locke's model consists of a civil state built upon the natural rights common to a people who need and welcome an executive power to protect their property and liberties. The government exists for the people's benefit and can be replaced or overthrown if it ceases to function towards that primary end. The intention of this lecture was for you to be able to assess the significance of intellectual individuals on change in society between 1625 and 1688. Knowledge-wise, you should now be able to explain the ideas of different individuals. Skills-wise, you will be analysing the different ways they impacted society between 1625 and 1688, and then behaviourally you will be evaluating their impacts to make judgments. Now complete the associated material.